John Cage was once asked what his favorite piece of music was, and he responded by saying it's the one he hasn't heard yet. Now, I know I keep talking about him a lot in these videos, but I just had to start with that quote for today's discussion. I think it's a very great idea, actually, and I don't think he was being silly in his response there. For me, it is so great to turn on an album or a recording for the first time, especially one that you have no idea about, no context, and to jump into the unknown and put it on and listen to it for the very first time. It doesn't matter if I go on to love it and listen to it many more times, or if I dislike it and turn it off pretty quickly. It's just that first moment of hearing something that you've never heard before. Today I want to talk to you about some of the things that make me listen to music, some of the things that make me like or dislike a particular recording, and to give you kind of a background of what led me to where I'm at now in my musical taste. And if you're not like how I described about having such an excitement for turning on a new album, I think you will by the end of these videos. And speaking of you, why do you listen to music? What a kind of an experience do you have when you listen to music? Let me know in the comments, and I really look forward to reading those. So why do I listen to music? And why am I so excited to turn that album I've never heard before on for the first time? Well, it's simple. I want to discover something. What is it I want to discover, though? Well, for me, it's kind of been like a two-part journey that I've been on with listening, or two-part quest, kind of. So the first part of that has been for sonic discoveries. I really, for a while, wanted to discover everything I could with new sounds, new instruments, new timbres, uh, new combinations. Uh, and also how complex sound can be, how dense, and just I was really interested to hear all of these new things for the first time and really just discover what the possibilities were. This led me to find such composers as Brian Ferniho, Morton Feldman, uh, Galina Ustvolskaya, and countless others. I could go on for uh, hours about these people that had uh, such profound impacts on me as not only a listener, but also a musician and a composer. So there's definitely no shortage of material there if you're interested to hear more about my favorite composers. But I want to now share a small clip, about a 10 second clip. Uh, this is an intro to a piece by Morton Feldman titled Violin and Orchestra. I really love his titles, but basically it's like Violin or uh, Concerto. So when I first heard this, uh, it was just absolutely amazing, first of all, and it was unlike anything else I had ever heard before. So why was it so amazing for me? So I had to think about it for a little bit because it's just so easy to say, oh, I really love this and then not explain why. But to explain why I love it, I realized that it was something I had never heard before, of course, but it was also something I couldn't imagine hearing. It wasn't something that it was like, a, you know, not like a tune in my head that maybe would be something I could play later. It was almost like, uh, for the same reason, why do we read books? Why do we read adventures and stories? Well, because it takes us somewhere that we didn't think about. Or why do we try some food for the first time? Well, it's to taste something that we've never tasted before. Well, that's what it is like for me listening to this music. I tasted something for the first time, or I went on a, a, an adventure in my mind that I had never went before, and I loved it, and I wanted that experience again and again. And modern classical music has really given me that. So I want you to listen to this it's a little excerpt here. And you will hear, I think, how it really is, at least for me, it was unlike anything I had heard before. <laughs> Sonic Possibilities, that was the first quest I was on. And actually the discoveries I mentioned above and, and uh, the countless others that we can talk about later, they really satisfied the majority of what I was looking for. I, I really found the sound that I, I thought was possible and I really was fulfilled uh, in this quest. That left me with part two to this, which is an emotional quest that I was on in music. Certainly the uh, composers I mentioned before, they kind of got to do double duty here because they not only had really amazing sounds, but they also had some really deep, uh, intense emotions in their music as well. But usually the emotions in their music were typically all of the same. I really can't 
put a word to it, but they're, they're very specific and they're, they're very intense. And it's like you listen to this music, at least for me, I listen to it at a certain time. Uh, and it's not applicable to every instance that I want to listen to music. So this led me to find different types of music. It led me to find um, two notable figures for me, which was Alison Krauss and uh, this artist here, which was the, the newest for me, uh, Rustin Kelly. Uh, I discovered both of their musics, um, not really intentionally, actually. I, I found it rather uh, unintentionally. Um, Allison's uh, I found by programming it into a playlist once for a radio show I was doing. And Rustin's music I found by uh, actually getting an email about uh, an album before it came out and it had a single in it. So I want to tell you about what it was like to hear that for the first time. When I got that email, I said, okay, let's check out these uh, new tracks. I think there was three different artists and his uh, new single was the last one. I was walking through a really beautiful uh, botanical garden in Kiev, Ukraine, and I turned that on and I actually had to move off the path and just sit down and listen because the music captivated me from the very first notes on the guitar all the way to the end of the song i was frozen just captivated with this really rich emotionally deep music i couldn't stop and actually i had to play it i think three or four more times in a row right after that just to really take it all in before i could get up and continue with my walk to the garden I could not wait for that album to be released, and finally it was, and I was still in Ukraine, and I remember being on a balcony, I think about 17th or 18th floor above the city, real late at night, everything real dark, but you could see the twinkling lights far away, and I put on this album for the first time, listened to it start to finish, and I can tell you, when you turn on something like Rustin Kelly for the first time, uh, at the right time, your emotions will be everywhere. You will be crying, you will be smiling, you'll be rejoicing. And for me, that was the second thing I needed in my listening journey, was something that was super emotionally intense, really rich, and just provided something that if you're having a tough time, you can turn it on. If you're having a great time, you can turn it on. Because there's music that really calls to all of that. And also another thing about that listening experience for me, is now anytime I play this album, I think, uh, you know, no, no matter whether it's today or, you know, in 10 years from now, I recall that first time I heard it uh, overlooking that beautiful city. And for me, that's when music is really special, is when you can recall the first moment you ever heard it. And there's a few albums like that for me, and those are the, really the closest to my heart. They're very, very special recordings. So now we've covered two parts of why I listen to music. First is looking for new sonic possibilities, and the second is looking for new emotional experiences or sensations. So now the, there's one kind of bonus reason that combines both of those. It gives me new sounds, not in a complex avant-garde way, but in a different way, and it gives me new experiences and sensations. And that is listening to music from all over the world, ancient traditional music. This has really allowed me to do something I actually cannot do right now, which is travel. Of course, right now this is being filmed during the pandemic and we are all stuck at home. Normally, I would be probably uh, on the other side of the globe right now, but I'm not. I'm stuck right here. And I haven't went anywhere, but I actually did. I went to, I think, about 10 countries already just by listening to their music. And you know, I've never been to any of those places uh, that I've listened to so far. I remember uh, I've already listened to music from Hungary, uh, Bulgaria, uh, Estonia, uh, Lithuania, uh, Czech Republic, probably many more. And I've never seen these places yet, but I will very soon, I hope. And I'm so excited to see what my experience on the ground there will be like after becoming partially familiarized, at least with one aspect of their culture, through their music. So until next week, thank you so much.